to it. If we started something up to arbitrary element, it will be X, then that still provides an estimate on the error between the isolation FI Y and this point, namely this thing here. That's usually in terms of the construction concept. So that actually does quite a few things. It gives you the existence of a unique six point, and it gives you a theoretical way of computing or approximating that six point through this distribution. Okay, so what's the main result? The main result is as follows. Let's see continuous and the coefficient. Check out the application. Satisfy D plus B equals zero. If there is constant L, delta, P, and Q, satisfying these conditions, such that the following three conditions are satisfied, then a discrete value value problem, one plus one plus two, has a unique solution for each H between zero and this delta. So let me just deconstruct this a little bit to show you where these um, this condition comes from and, and, and what it's needed for. Three point one is known as a least condition. That's a very famous condition, and I have other video in references uh, talking about um, the lift conditions and where it's satisfied the conditions and the lift conditions. Now, three point two is related to the contraction constant. Alpha. Now, it turns out the distance mass on the left hand side is actually going to be the alpha in the next zero. So, as you can see here, we're seeing that we also have a bigger distance right here. So, we also have alpha if this is zero, and this is satisfied well. This is actually going to be the alpha. Okay, and finally, 3.3 is just related back to the voltage inequality, okay? We needed um, this condition on our PNQ, um, so we've got the voltage inequality. Okay, so let's look at the proof now of this main result. The idea is to use the next response here. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is set up a complete message space. So here's our set, and here's our way of measuring distance between two vectors, in our plus minor. This kind of general metric here. It's related to Minkowski. Okay, now, to here, to get this up here, we're going to get some sort of metric space, and the proof is in this video here, which you can look up um, on YouTube. Now, what we do is we take our, uh, the first thing we'll do is set some sort of operator that match the set DS space itself. Okay, so what we're going to do is, we're going to write a letter 2.1, which says that the value value problem, the discrete value value problem, 1.1.1.2, is equivalent to this summation equation of Z to Green function here. Okay, now, based on this right hand side of the equivalent summation equation. We're going to define an operator, uh, TQ or PQ, uh, I should have written big S here or something, but I'm just going to write big T to it. Uh, but essentially this right hand side. Okay, so what you can see hopefully now is that if this has a fixed point, if T to X or equal to X, then this is the same as that. So if we can show that there is a short that satisfies this, then that's equivalent to that problem, which is equivalent to our original discrete DVP. So that's what we have a solution. Okay, so what we've got our focus now changes a little bit to this. And showing that this has a circle X point. So T to the X to the equal to the sum unique vector X to the So how do we show that this has a unique fixed point? Well, we want to use that as fixed point here. Okay, well, we've got to have some space. We want to show that our operator, that's in this case, after the end of one is after, and we also want to show this in So this is actually pretty easy to show. Okay? The um, slightly difficult thing is to show that we have a fixed map on our hands. Okay, so we want to show that there is a construction constant number. So you're right, 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 you're I guess that's the following inequality. And then what we can do now is, you know, sort of a, something else, a, a two expressions once put together, I can apply a little bit of inequality to this sum here. So, essentially, this right hand side can be made less than or equal to this, for some P and Q, should be greater than 1, which satisfies this. Okay? Okay, well, notice here that this is almost the D sub P of X by Y. But if you had another little sum here, it would be essentially less than or equal to uh, X to the Y, that is, D sub P of X to the Y. Okay, so what I've, what I've got now is this right hand side is in terms of this metric D sub P, I'm going to try to express the left hand side in terms of D sub P of this. Okay, well, I can simplify what's in this big bracket just by number earlier than I can section a 2 together. Or this. And then, well, again, I'm trying to form this on the left hand side, so I can take to the power P and then sum up and take the whole thing to the power 1 on P. So, here I've got this up here, this um, part of this, so this, so using my earlier inequality, I come up with the following, and H is the list of this, this, this delta, as in the theorem, then I've actually got a contracted map, where this is strictly less than one, and this is one of the conditions of that theorem, 3.2. Okay? So, we've shown that our operator, to keep up, match a 
Okay, I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to go to the next one. And this working shows that our mapping to do that is contracted. So all of the conditions of band 6.0 are going to follow. So what it means is that the mapping T2 has a unique fixed point. And this yields the existence of a solution to a new solution to that solution equation, which is equivalent to showing that there is a unique solution to that discrete value value problem, not from one, not from two. Okay, and you can end up here, but you can go a bit further and show that um, the sequence reverses to a unique fixed point, and you can have this error um, on the uh, iteration between the iteration and the unique fixed point. So that's the delay result. So this is um, a reasonably abstract result, and it looks very general. Um, what we're going to do now is just choose some particular values of T2 to satisfy this finish, and show you how 3.3, 3.2 simplify a little bit. So the following is a corollary. So the main result, just by choosing a P and Q equal 2, um, and sort of repeating the argument in the proof, choosing the following. So there's continuation of getting these coefficients uh, at to be some non-zero value. If there's just an L such that S satisfies this resistance condition, that's the same for the previous. And um, so these functions also have a zero length end such that this uh, is satisfied. Then one problem with the initial solution for all H between zero and Delta. So if this is slightly simpler to this setup, here P and Q are uh, not equal to, so this is obviously satisfied, so I don't think that in my problem. And this reduces down to this length of the P and Q over to zero. So I'm not going to discuss the proof too much here, I'm just listening to the main point, just so you can show that, um, again, we have a contracted mapping on our hands, um, and it uh, turns out that this is a contraction constant. This condition ensures the alpha is strictly less than one. Okay. Let me show you um, an example of the power of these results. Let me just point out an example um, showing the power of Corolla 3.2. So essentially, the choice of metric in the group of 3.1 or Corolla 3.2 ensures that a larger range of um, fields are visible than, for example, another kind of metric. So assume you have the mass metric defined in the following way with the difference, the absolute value of the difference of each corresponding component um, of your mass and each other. Just consider that P equals 2 equals 2, and then we run the proof of, say, 3.1 or Corollary 3.2 with this particular metric, then uh, instead of, say, this condition, you would get this condition. Now, this is a stronger condition than, um, for example, this one here. Okay, and let me give you an example of, um, of uh, uh, a discrete value value problem that satisfies the same condition of Corollary 3.2 that doesn't satisfy the uh, this condition here. I get to show that my results are a little bit more wide-ranging than my others. Okay, so let's just consider the following discrete value value problem. And this is the capacity that we saw in the following way in our coefficients. Now, that condition is here or here, and again equals 1. Now, you can show that the next step does satisfy our richest condition with this L equals 8.5. The richest condition is just this condition here. Um, and in this video, you'll see this video, you'll see why essentially, because GFDY is bounded by 8.5 and GFDY is GFDY. Okay? For so more details, you can see this video here. Um, you can show that the conditions of, say, corollary, corollary 2.2 are all satisfied. Um, for H between zero and one quarter. Now, if you just note that this condition does not hold, because if you calculate um, uh, this with the L equals a fifth, the N equals one, then U and V given here, you get the fixing of this, which is not less than one. So the Hamlet of Valve um, work doesn't apply to this example, but you can see that uh, what can be verified that the ideas in this presentation do apply. Okay, so that's one of the um, um, advances that this presentation makes over in this interest. Now, here are some um, references to the readings. Like I said at the beginning, the ideas in this paper are forthcoming research to be published in the Journal of Different Equations and Applications. And I'll put a link to the, um, the journal uh, page when this article becomes available. I'll update the description section. I'd like to thank uh, Professor Jerry Lattice and all staff at the Journal of Different Equations and Applications for their encouragement for me to put this presentation together. Also, through uh, YouTube. Here are the references, uh, many of which I've referred to in this presentation. Now, there might be a couple here where I actually haven't referred to them. Um, if I didn't, just take those as more further reading. So I'll show this to you um, just very briefly. Hi everyone, I'm Chris Hill and I'm an academician at the University of New South Wales in Sydney, Australia. Now, I'm really excited to be bringing you this presentation on recent research in mathematics. Now, the aims of these kinds of presentations are as follows. First, to freely and openly share recent research discoveries in mathematics with the world. Secondly, to increase the impact and the awareness of the research involved. Thirdly, to stimulate further research into the area of interest. And finally, to foster connections with the worldwide research community. Now, the potential audiences for these kinds of presentations uh, range from advanced undergraduates through to career researchers. Now, this includes honors, masters, PhD students, postdocs, uh, and professors. I hope you enjoy this presentation. I hope you find it interesting, engaging, and useful. Hi, everyone. In this presentation,
presentation, I'm going to discuss and listen to our research. Is that reasonable? Yes, sir. I'm going to talk about general model colleagues. This is an application for so-called fractional differential equations. I'll have a few more. Now, some of these applications will include the following so-called arbitrary bounds of solutions, and also uh, some non-multiplicity results, which kind of break up many of the solutions very recently speaking. Now, a uh, recurring theme to this presentation is the use of the so-called Nicaragua method function. Anyway, the general problem that we're going to look at is here, this is a general initial value problem. The Q here is um, the order of this general differential equation, and in particular, the Q here could be a whole number, or it could be a fraction, and hence we're fractional differential equations. Now, uh, let's say if Q equals 1, then the operator for Q is just the regular derivative for the differential operator from that first course of calculus. So, this equation 1.1 is kind of like a generalized differential equation of arbitrary order. Now the right hand side is going to be continuous throughout, and it could be non-linear. And we see in 1.2 that um, this 